talk to 30, our next speaker is called Damien. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to talk about the open decision framework, as you can see. Please, if you Um, thanks a lot. Do I, I speak a, um, enough loud for everyone? Okay. So, um, this is about how to make everybody IP. Uh, spoiler alert, you can't. So, um, a little bit about me. My, main, my name is Damien. I'm not a designer, I'm a database guy. And there's somewhat a long journey that came bring me here. Uh, my story is that I founded a PostgreSQL consulting company. Uh, anybody here using Postgres? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And so I'm also, uh, so I'm kind of a director of a uh, 30 people company and I'm also involved in the Postgres community. So I've got this two mind uh, on two uh, spaces. Uh, if you want more, more uh, about me, just check up my GitHub account. Um, so my story, we actually started like a kind of joke. We should make a company and do open source. And so we did, uh, let's make a company like we make open source. So yeah, clear principles that we all know, transparency, open discussion, working remotely, resource structure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, on paper, it's really, really good. Uh, when, I, when I explain this to people, they say, oh, wow, this is cool. Until they come to us, to, to our company, and they, they realize our decision workflow looks like this. <laughs> um, no, actually, we don't throw fishes at each other, but anyway, it's pretty much like this. So problems. Well, consensus does not scale. You know, when you grow the group, it's harder to get everybody on the same page and everybody agreed on the same questions. Um, something you see on, on open source communities is that, yeah, meetings and meetings and meetings, or, which, not, is, which is not better, hundreds of emails. Um, we reached a point where we would meet like two hours and at the end of the meeting we were not even able to agree on if we are, had decided something. So we, are, we had people going out of the meeting saying, okay, we need to discuss this next time. And some people saying, okay, this was a good meeting. And so total mess. Uh, this leads to someone which is more problematic, which is silent disapproval, um, which is terrible actually, because at some point people are so bored with the meetings they just stop talking because, yeah, they don't trust the process anymore. And, yeah, they say, okay, do, let's, let's, let them talk and we'll do what we want afterwards. And also, you got to realize that at some point, not taking a decision is a decision. And you have people that are very uh, skilled at the idea. <laughs> if they don't want a decision, they are very, uh, they can make sure that no decision will be made. Um, so here comes the open decision framework. So it's not something um, uh, I came up with. It's developed by Red Hat. It's published on GitHub. So I, I will give the link at the end. Uh, it was published last year, but I guess it's from uh, back. Uh, back uh, uh, it's a long process for them to, to, to write this. Uh, and what we did is just we translated it in, in French, okay? So, which is, a, by the way, a great uh, way to contribute to open source. If you don't know where to start, just uh, start translating in your own language. It's a nice idea, easy to, to, to start. And so we forked uh, this open decision framework to make our own de decision framework. So, um, I, yeah, I, need, I think I need there to to be clear that uh, I have no relationship with Red Hat, and uh, <laughs> I'm not, anything I'm gonna say is in any way, uh, of course, uh, uh, related to, to their vision of it. It's my vision of it. It's how we use it, of course. Um, so, let's start by a definition. What is an open decision? Well, in another, for another audience, I would spend more time on this, but 
yeah, if you're here, you already know what are uh, the open source principles. Transparency, inclusive, user-centric, yeah, v just <coughs> keep this in mind uh, all along the decision process. So what is it? It's just four steps, actually. When, when I saw that, I should, uh, my, my first thought was, this is vaporware. This is just, it's too easy. <coughs> I mean, it's, it looks too, too simple. But when, I, when we translated it, we found that there were principles and little ideas in every step that are really, really helpful and powerful, actually. So, first step, concept, define, plan, ideate. Um, just start with asking a few questions. What's the problem? What the problem is? How we will make the decision? Do we need to vote on this? Do we need, I don't know, some kind of uh, um, simple agreement or anything? Um, do we need lawyers to, to review the decision, etc., etc.? Uh, find who's likely to disagree, who's likely to reject this decision from the start, and people that likely to opt out. You know, you already know when you start uh, tackling a problem that there are people that maybe don't want you to go there. Maybe people that have already tried to do this. So this is basically build a clear roadmap for your process. Um, the first uh, one is a tricky one, because I found it incredibly uh, difficult to state the problem within one or two, f two sentences. Actually, it's very complicated. And yeah, it can be very willing. And so, yeah, you get potential frameworks along the way. So this first step is here to avoid these frameworks afterwards, OK? So communication channels, where we will discuss. Will we be public or not? Is it on IRC? Is it on, I don't know, mailing list? Or is it on a forum? Do we need to do video calls or not? I don't know. Will, will be the video calls recorded or not? And of course, deadlines. Because some, some people, when they have a problem, they want you to fix it right away. Some people want to uh, you know, calm down the things a little bit. So yeah, be very clear from the start uh, how you want to, to, to go. Phase two, sorry. So again, questions. Let's go back then. Let's see who already tried to solve this, what they tried, what they did. Um, let's look at it. Maybe there's another problem beyond this problem. It's a very common scheme. And yet, you get user feedback. You go to people and try to understand what is their problem. And again, you try to identify so all the different kinds of people that are involved in this problem. This is clearly the most difficult part uh, because, um, and this is common, but uh, especially in tech people and open source people, they have a tendency to rush to the solution, to rush through the tools, to say, okay, let's just use this tool, it's perfect and everything. Um, for, ev for instance, if I, if I ask this question uh, about a, a project of mine, and I say, OK, I have problem managing my, uh, my uh, bug, you know, my bug uh, submissions. Yeah, lots of people will go and add me and say, OK, just use GitHub issues or GitLab or whatever uh, ticket uh, system you, uh, there is. But that's not exactly what uh, I'm, I'm, I'm my question. And you need to take your time and um, un embrace complexity. I really liked the presentation before because it was about that, you know. There's this uh, principle in open source which says keep it simple. But the solution must be simple. But you n must not uh, have a simple view on reality. Reality is complex. Human are complex. Your human are not binary machines. So do not be afraid of complexity. And of course, maintain a safe environment, so let people talk and don't judge them 
for what they, say, they have to say. And of course, take your time to explore the problem. You know? Just don't rush to the solution. Take your time. Explore all the problem and all the complexity of it. OK, design, test, develop. So yeah, just now, you have put the problem in place. Just imagine, what if, what if we had uh, um, unlimited access to any kind of money? What if we were like uh, 10 years ago? What if, uh, I don't know, what if we start from, from scratch, et cetera, et cetera? A lot of these ideas, you're going to throw them away. But in the process of this, you will find some you know, I, other ideas on also. And also, again, identify people that will be early adopters and people that will go, give you uh, feedbacks on your prototypes. So this is the fun part, uh, because you try to build a prototype, whatever that means. Um, uh, you're going to search for alternatives. You're going to do some testing, etc., etc. And in the end, you simplify and reduce the options. And also, prepare an escape plan because you might fail. So that's at, at this point, you might also want to um, just, yeah, well, just w say, what if it fails? It's interesting to think of, about this ahead of time. And in the end, launch, deploy, cl uh, close. So pretty much like a, a, a development process when you uh, putting your your code in production, just like that. You will ask your question about, well, we, did we answer the, the initial question? So a lot of time, we realize that we have maybe spent four hours of meetings, and at the end, we, have, we found a great solution, but it's not the solution for the question. And it's really, really common. Um, how do we monitor the impact of our decision? How do, you, how do we know if our decision will uh, will, I don't uh, fail or be a success. Um, how do we make revision based on feedback? So our decision will have, will have an impact on people. So we will receive feedback, and what will we do with this? Uh, what will we leave to the future generation? We have found something. So maybe later uh, other people can use what we've done here, and also what have we learned. And yes, just take a, a rendezvous for, I don't know, six months, one year later, sit back again, and just look back to what we have done. So again, very simple things, but, but be proud. It's difficult to take a decision. It's very difficult, uh, especially in a decentralized environment where a lot of people have strong opinions. It's very difficult to, to, to cut it and yeah, come up with something. So tell the story. Um, I have experienced that when you take a very difficult decision, people will accept it more if you explain that you have spent hours and hours of meetings, if you have spent lots of you know, prototypes and everything. If, the, if people can understand how much you have worked to get this decision, they will accept it, even if that's, if that's not their solution that has been chosen and contribute upstream, which means, yeah, maybe again, you may have learned some things along the way, so push that back to other people. And stay engaged with people, reje reject the decision. Again, you can't make everyone happy, but don't act like you have won and people and other people have lost, because in the end, maybe they were right, maybe you were wrong, maybe you, you took the wrong decision. And maybe in six months, when you realize you failed, you will be happy to come back at them and say, OK, we had uh, this idea. It failed. You were right. Can you help us fixing it? And if you act like you have won and they have lost, they will probably laugh at you, say, I told you so, and yeah, uh, wash their hands. If you stay engaged with them, saying, OK, I know you have this issue. I know you have this critic. We are monitoring it. We are, fo we are, we are following on it. Um, yeah, it, it helps. So in practice, um, we use this framework uh, for one year now. 
We used it in six different work groups, uh, especially for marketing decision, which is kind of hard because on the 30 people in the company, we have like, uh, I said, 20 database guys, so not people really um, are accustomed to marketing. And each step took, yeah, like from one to four hours. Each group was very small. And some people uh, didn't like the framework. It's found it was a bit uh, messy. And uh, others really liked it. And uh, especially for newcomers in the company, it was really, really easier to get involved because the, there is a clear path. You know where you're going. You know when you can contribute. <coughs> so yeah, it worked. We solved a particular problem uh, that uh, was bothering everyone for the last five years, really something, you know, the big problems that everyone knows about it, nobody knows what to do about it. We've solved that. Um, and we found a compromise in another situation. We had two very uh, opposite groups who say, uh, we want A, and the other group say, we, we want B. And so it's kind of stuck in some, you know, clueless opposition. And we found some compromise, and it, it really worked well. And of course, it failed. And uh, on, some, on some other uh, 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 decisions we made, because it's not magic. Uh, and, but the idea is that they failed fast. And I wouldn't stress uh, enough the importance of failing fast. Yeah, you need to fail fast, learn, and go back at it. And so instead of getting stuck on decision we can do we, do, we did something. And we learned by failing, and we tried other things. So, yeah. So I'm not telling you to do what we do, uh, what we did. Um, I'm just telling you to do your own uh, decision framework in your community or in your company. Uh, so obviously, Red Hat has done it, published it on, on GitHub. Uh, you have GitLab that has a great handbook that I would recommend, and they have a page on leadership too. And also Valve, the uh, game computing company, which has a very interesting uh, concept called Cabal. Um, I don't have time to talk about this, but all three links are really, very worth it. Um, and yeah, Acup company. Um, I'm really interesting being, I've I spent 10 years being at the same time the director of a company and at the same time a community member. And I'm very interested of yeah, what uh, open source principle can do for corporate management. Because I, the actual state of corporate management is garbage, to be polite. Um, I, I, I go in a lot of uh, clients that I won't name, of course. But yeah, most of the corporate management uh, practices I see are just mostly inhuman and just disrespectful for people. So we have a, a, a common ground of open source principles that we can use to put inside our own companies. So obviously a company is not an open source project, but yeah, you, you, we can do some. Uh, we can use a lot of this in our uh, daily jobs. And that's it. And at the end, everyone is happy. Um, thank you. Thank you. So this is... Great. Now, by the way, this is a, a bit new for me. I do most uh, database talks. So if you can be, take a few mm -hmm. times to give me feedback on what I did, I'd be, it'd be, be great. Mm -hmm. You said that you shouldn't. Uh, um, you, you should um, you consider there are alternatives. And this. So um, I understand that why that's necessary. I mean, while you're you know developing and stuff, you should get in there. Um, you shouldn't uh, stop looking left and right. But doesn't that kind of reopen the, the, the you know the gray area of, of you know yeah. the whole decision kind of? And isn't that kind of 
Yeah, the question is, if I understand, is that uh, on step three, when you search for alternative, you can reopen questions that you have uh, uh, should have closed in the previous steps. Uh, yeah, this is a common mistake. Uh, obviously, this is if I would say if you did your jobs on on this part on the complexity, um, it doesn't really happen because we all we. The problem has been really clearly stated, so yeah, you again, this is a very important part of it. Let complexity be, and um, um, I'd say it's a risk, but yeah, you uh, you need to to prepare for that be before I think. If so, but it's not it's okay. You can go back. I mean, it's not like you you failed your 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 own process. If you want to go back, I mean, you, you can realize that. Okay, we missed the, that part of the problem that we did not explore. Um, looking at this solution showed us that, yeah, we must go back. It's okay to go back. Yeah, what were the changes that you made to the original Okay, um, but f first, first we, we translated in French. So as long as you translate it, it's not exactly the same. Um, and then we kind of, um, um, we have our own handbook, so we changed the format and we simplified a bit the, 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 the content to, so that it can be included in our handbook, which hopefully should be open source in a few, in a few months. We have a decision on this too. Uh, so yeah, mostly adapting things. and. Yeah, some things on uh, phase one, phase two. There are some items we move from one phase to another, but really it's not that big deal. We we pretty much stick to to the to the to the thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you talked uh, at the end uh, that you had a, a big uh, divide between two groups of people, and you found a consensus. Um, isn't there? A well, not a consensus. That's important too. <laughs> Yes, that was my question, because sometimes if you find a consensus, then it happens that both groups are unhappy because they both have to concede yeah. at key points. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, that was that one. Yeah, uh, we don't, uh, consensus doesn't scale. So we don't try to reach consensus at all costs. Um, what we want is to recognize that some people are against this decision and acknowledge that and being able to to, to, you know, to, 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 to go back at them if we need. But instead of uh, everybody is okay with the decision, what we want is everybody can live with it. It's not the same thing. You can say, okay, I'm not okay at all with what you're doing, but I, I can live with it. You know, it's not against my principle. It's just a bad idea, but I, I'm, I will continue to say it's a bad idea, but I can live with it. It's very different from consensus. Yeah. So with this, with this model, in my understanding, a lot of similarities to project management. Sorry. It, it has a lot of similarities with project management yeah. ideas. So, so is this, did you use this for decision making or project management? Like, for example, yeah. So the, the question is, uh, did we? It's similar to project management, and uh, did we use it for project management? Um, not really. Uh, we don't do project management the way people would think we are, we, because we're not a really project-based company. We're not a developing company. We're much a, a support company, consulting company, training company. So there's not that much of projects inside the company. But we did use it here for big projects, big uh, decision that can be, uh, uh, I mean, looked at uh, from outside like projects, yeah. Yeah. So you need a, um, some kind of problem. Yeah, everything starts with, uh, yeah, everything starts with a problem and someone able to state the problem clearly, which is not simple. Uh, so a lot of, yeah, oh, no problem. A lot of people are very, sometimes are very unhappy with the situation, and they are very, uh, they are, 
lot of problem to express the real problematic behind it. So this is where phase two is important to help them, give them confidence, let them talk, and let them give them the time to explain what is the problem behind the simple uh, expression of unhappiness. Sorry. Sorry, we're out of time. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs>